After 9-11, people's relationships with airports really changed. It's a very stressful environment and people had to arrive at the airport a lot earlier to allow enough time for security. But once they passed the security, they actually had a lot of time on their hands as they're waiting for their flight. And airport art programs really recognized that was an opportunity to deliver a unique art experience. We try and find those spaces where people might be waiting at a gate or waiting near a security line and really look at how art could transform those areas. Not all the passengers are going to look at the art or may even have an interest in the art. But our philosophy is that, you know, even just having something in the background, something that might catch their eye, whether it's a color or a texture or something with movement, will still add something to the environment. By interacting with some of the artworks, it might help them just to sort of uh, slow down for a minute, just maybe take something in that they hadn't thought about, and it kind of enhances the overall experience at the airport. I think LAX has always had sort of an interesting um, design aesthetic to it, actually. You know, you have the theme building. It's a very iconic piece of architecture right in the middle of the airport. And then we have the pylons that are welcoming passengers and visitors. As well as some of the historic mosaic murals you'll find in the tunnels. And I think the art program is continuing that design aesthetic through the curation of our art exhibitions from photography to painting to video art to installations to sculpture and even dance. One of the artworks we get a lot of feedback from passengers is Joyce Delaw's Elevate in Terminal 3, featuring these origami paper airplanes that's been imprinted with the words of the Geneva Conventions as well as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I think the principles that are listed in those documents are really important to keep in mind, especially in an airport such as LAX. Hashtag LAX Poppies is located in our meet and greet area of Terminal 1, right next to baggage claim. So people are sitting there waiting for their friends and family to arrive, and the artwork that's on display there is playing off the idea of presenting a bouquet of flowers to a loved one upon their arrival. So we have these giant portraits of poppies, and the title is an invitation to basically take a photo of themselves in front of the paintings and upload it with the hashtag. And so there's this other virtual exhibition taking place online as well. At LAX, we have a unique opportunity. We have over 50 million passengers on an annual basis, and we have eight different terminals to show a wide variety of artworks. And I think it's very reflective of the creative community here in Los Angeles. As a curator, I've worked in galleries, museums, but when I submit a proposal to um, do an installation at LAX, it's a very different space to handle in so many different ways. So it's very challenging, but also really exciting. When we were shown Terminal 3, it was this gargantuan white box. Um, we were a little overwhelmed. One wall is 210 feet long. You know, we had a time frame of three to four days for installation. So we had to develop a piece that could go up in that amount of time. We wanted to create some moments of intimacy, but I think, and also playfulness. So we wanted to add color. We wanted to not make the space feel so large. 
And so one of the first decisions that we made was how to deal with the long wall. And painting a giant black shape was a great platform to start with because then we could build off of that. We're really excited about this particular installation because it's the first time Margaret and Jameson, a husband and wife, they're both artists, but they'd actually never exhibited their work together. But we could see how it could be a really sort of intriguing show, and we could see where their artwork would have a dialogue if it was placed in the same space. So it'll be really interesting to watch this one unfold over the next week. They're the kind of artists who can handle this kind of a challenge, because I think not everybody can. It's about enhancing the environment, but in a way that works with it, so it takes into consideration the way the airport itself was built. Traveler is not here to see the work. That's not their impetus for being here. They're here as travelers. We tried to create more of an environmental installation. It allows the viewer to experience it through the periphery or at a glance, something that you experience as you walk through. I've been working with cut metal for the past couple years. The gates that I've been working with are ones that are found in my neighborhood in Highland Park. So I've been photographing the gates that I see every day, and they're pretty common throughout Southern California. And I'm going to play with the, the architecture of the space, so we're going to cut out areas where there are doorways into offices, and there's a defibrillator that we're going to cut the metal around. Margaret's pieces take something that, that we think of generally as a, a barrier. It's a gate, is a separation between two spaces, and she transforms it into these really wonderfully flowing, billowy environments and gives it a completely different meaning. A boundary is really an illusion and you can pass through. And so we're literally taking it and twisting it and turning it. I think as people travel from one place to another, there's a, a change that happens in their lives, and I think that that's what happens in this installation. The space, our work's installed, and there's a passageway, so as you're walking through it from one end to the other, it's like a beginning and an end. Weatherbox is an attempt at taking kind of a section out of the the sunset, where the land meets the sun. And we just take that little rectangle out and bring it to you. And it's a mashup of mine and Margaret's work. So doing a big public art piece at LAX is an opportunity to be seen by more people than we would ever have an opportunity to be seen by. Um, it is exposure to the nth degree. If this work were at any museum or art gallery, the amount of exposure is a fraction of what it gets here. And there are very few venues where you get the opportunity to make a 210 foot long piece. One of the hallmarks of the Los Angeles art community is that it really welcomes experimentation. And I think our exhibition sites are almost like little laboratories. I think that we find artists who are excited to step outside of the gallery and push those boundaries and really see the space through different eyes, through a different viewpoint. I'm sort of enamored with LAX itself. It's one place in the urban sprawl of Los Angeles that we all end up in at some point. And there's this love-hate relationship that we have with it. You know, it, it can be a pain to deal with and there's constant construction. And so I think about it in terms of what that means emotionally to people. It is a point of both departure and arrival. So it could be a happy moment at LAX. It could be a sad moment of saying goodbye to somebody. And all those things inform how I talk to the artists about it and ultimately how we end up collaborating. The art world, especially in the gallery world, can seem very insular um, and elitist. Uh, which alienates a lot of people from going into the galleries. The galleries are free. Art is for the people. It is not in a vacuum. And bringing it out into a public venue like LAX is a testament to that. When I'm walking through the terminals and I see somebody who might be in a big rush but suddenly stop for a minute and look at an artwork, then I'm just reminded what we're trying to do. And then I know we've given them something to think about, some kind of memory maybe to take on their journey with them.